So um, what I'm going to do in the presentation is um, he has questions. Uh, is it is it all right if they just uh, type the uh, questions in the chat box, Todd, and then uh, interrupting the presentation to answer questions, or would you rather do that at the end? You can interrupt. That's fine. If it's uh, pertinent, that, yeah, that works. Uh, the webcast that we do, um, by, by we we post this uh, these webcasts at a couple different places on the internet. But our main uh, sort of gathering location for these webcasts is smallbusinesswebcast.com. So if you've come to, from a, a different uh, location, I'd encourage you to um, sign up uh, to register at uh, smallbusinesswebcast.com. We have several other webcasts um, coming up, and so um, most of the webcasts we've done are recorded. So if you're registered and logged in there, you, you can mess over the uh, here. I'll show you. You can mess over the events tab, and logged in, which I'm not logged in at the moment. If I was logged in, and into seeing this webcast transcripts underneath, you'd also see uh, record webcasts. So you can see any. Of if, if you want immediate gratification and don't want to wait for a live webcast, you can see any of the old webcasts uh, going to the recorded webcast under that tab. Um, but we've got a few coming up. Um, Hack Savings, as you see, is coming up. Uh, starting a new business to-do list, uh, LC. Go to the events page to see a more comprehensive list of all of them that we have coming up. Uh, we actually do a lot more than this that, that aren't yet, but they'll uh, um, use, of course, on, on the recorded uh, webcast page, and we'll post live ones uh, that will be coming up um, in the next months. So um, we want to give a, we have a couple people so far. I think we want a few more minutes for people to um on. Um, here. Questions before we get started? Uh, um, uh, again, uh, um, as I mentioned before, congregation is a, a pretty complicated area. Um, basically, the idea is, and in, in, in Todd will go into more detail on this, but basically the idea is that um, uh, you, you buy a building and you're depreciating, it's a commercial property, you're depreciating that over 39 and 30 years, and um, you know, there's a lot of different uh, um, that go into that property, so we don't necessarily really need to depreciate those over 39 years. And, uh, um, this is if you're not going to do that, you need uh, backup to uh, go up against the IRS to show uh, um, that congregation uh, can, can that we can accelerate accelerate that uh, depreciation and um, uh, each greater depreciation expense early was going to um, a lot of money in taxes. Let's see, I have a, a quick question from Ying before we get started. Um, and will it be part of cost of goods sold or business expenses? And so I assume what we're talking about there is uh, are we talking about shipping the materials for the building? Is that what we're talking about, Ying? Yes, but shipping the uh, materials for the building. Um, well, um, we're shipping imported pro products. Um, all the cost segregation questions. So, uh, yeah. Um, uh, it, it should really be part of the cost of goods sold rather than a uh, business expense. That should be built into the product. Um, so, um, 
I think we've given a time here. Uh, Todd, shall we uh, get started? Sure. Uh, can you hear me pretty well? Uh, yeah, the only two that will be unmuted um, will be you and I. And um, other people that have questions can just type them in the uh, chat box and, and I unmute uh, you there. Uh, yeah. Looks like it's joined us. I'll have to mute. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think we're all ready to go. Okay. Um, just some information about myself and my firm. I'm Todd Grabowski uh, from the Concord Group. Um, we're a specialty tax consulting firm. Uh, we don't do any accounting work whatsoever, though. We specialize in engineered tax solutions. Rarely, it's going to be cost segregation studies. Our firm does. Uh, we've done over 600 studies uh, at firm. Um, my partners are lead engineer. Uh, I have other engineers on staff. Uh, I'm and he's a large accounting firm. So we strictly, and this thing the service really mandates is that engineers perform this study, not uh, CPAs or anything else for that matter. And the reason, we'll get into this in a moment, but the reason being is that it's very blueprint intensive. Um, and something that the same way that, that uh, we don't do accounting, uh, sign tax returns because we're not CAs, uh, the same for CPA not performing cost segregation because it's relatively complex. And let me mention that backup portion, um, which is the study, is uh, really a legitimate study and something that can be uh, scrutinized by the service and have no issues whatsoever. So, um, we can see John, if you want to flip the page for me. Sure. If you could, one more. Okay. Now, segregation. Uh, creation is an I preferred tax strategy. Bring depreciation and asset to reduce tax liability. And also cash flow. Okay, I'm here. Uh, it's a comprehensive engineering based analysis that adds building components from construction and acquisition costs. So, operating that 39 year, those 39 year assets, uh, say the 5, 7, or 15 were applicable. Separate assets from the, um, the 30 year asset, which is going to be the building itself or the structural component of the building. It's, it identifies items that are eligible to be classified as either tangible personal property, uh, land improvements, land being any type of uh, landscaping, lighting, those types of things that might be in the outside building, uh, separating those from the structural components of a building. And what then it maximizes the tax depreciation deductions so that it can, you know, again, um, pay the federal income taxes, uh, also improve cash flow markedly. And if anyone's, feel free to jump in, or if you want to um, post those on the, the chat, I will uh, keep them in that so I can answer any questions that come through as well. You want to next? Okay. Okay, thank you. Segregation. And it gets down to, or I should say, essentially, it gets down to the um, time of the deductions and also the, the income taxes and improving cash flows. Um, in the code, it encourages taxpayers to maximize their depreciation. So one, of the, uh, um, one of the reasons, uh, in and of itself, is the main reason why. Um, clients should be using cost segregation. It's essentially the proper way to depreciate an asset. So I want to take these saves, you know, over 39 years and just get the right amount. Well, that's similar, and, and I hear that a lot from our clients and our prospects and those types of individuals, even CPAs for that matter. Uh, I think it's back to the, the lottery theory, if you will. A million dollars, would you want a million dollars now or would you want 50000 for 20 years? 
So, um, you know, as far as that goes, the reason using it is because it's IRS preferred. It is something completely legal as far as that goes in the code. And it's something that will, um, again, drape um, um, income taxes to be lowered and improve cash flow uh, market. market. Next slide. Okay. Bottom line on cost segregation. Um, as far as savings go, kind of general rule that we like to use is for every million dollars in basis on a property, we can clients, uh, I should say, add to our clients um, deductions between two hundred thousand dollars in the first year. So million dollars in, in, in basis on a property, we lease deductions of about a hundred to two hundred thousand. That's kind of an estimate. That's kind of a good, good um, kind of way as that goes. But we also do a free analysis, and this is something that um, I think is imperative with cost segregation studies. Is we do a free full analysis of where to properly identify what the savings will be, literally all down to the number uh, within about five percent or. Uh, conservative estimate. Now, segregation again, it's it's going to be a great return on your investment on your property, uh, improve cash flows, and also some taxes. Um, the individuals have been using this for years. The real estate owners, people are in the commercial real estate business as, as a thing, if you will, um, have been doing this for years. It's a great way. In cash flow and you know buy new properties for that matter uh, and or things of that nature. So, um, very savvy tax strategy that, that many people do not know about. Um, I'm in CPAs all the time, um, have a lot of experience with it or have never heard of it. Um, in being behind that is there's not companies that can do this, um, and really for the middle market, um, there's not a lot. A lot of firms that will, will do studies for, for you know, $2 million dollar building. Um, and speak experience, I know a lot of the large accounting firms, such as the lawyer I was at, um, would study um, for under thirty thousand uh, dollars in fees. So that really puts the one or two or three million dollar building, um, you know, out of reach, so to speak. Just like he's not going to be there for them. So um, when we started our firm was because we really that we can serve the market, you know, the million dollar, two, three, five, what do you, um, that no one was serving before. So, so part of uh, on a daily basis and with our sales group is, is to uh, let CPAs know we are a source for you to, to save significant tax dollars. It's a interest free loan, right, Todd? That's exactly what it is. I mean, I tell people all the time, especially owners that have never heard of this. Um, you know, you, you're overpaying on your tax, taxes. And people kind of hate to hear that, that when you're mad, but at the same time, it's something there. there um, you know, if you are, if you're if you're if you're not increasing your deductions or maximizing your deductions, um, not really looking out for yourself as much as you probably should be. So, so um, it's so something that could be used prior to the, the purchase of, of a building in determining your return on investment. If you've got a uh, interest-free loan like this, it's going to completely change the ROI of that investment, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, the beauty of cost segregation, and this is the as well, um, if you're going to get catch-up depreciation. It will call catch-up depreciation with depreciation from when the asset was placed in service. Now, let me give you here. The cost segregation studies with respect to the catch up depreciation is something that's been in service from the last seven years. Okay? Last say meaning purchased or improved in the last three to seven years. The reason the allows you to catch up on all the missed depreciation you've been missing in the current year. Okay, so if you only for five years, you've taken off five three nine ninths, twelve percent of depreciation. 
we be your uh, five property. We'll do combined property because it has been service for five years in the current year. Now, what does that do? That allows you to maximize your depreciation over the over the bit that you've been missing, if you will, the depreciation. There's no return. I need to have a 3115 with a change of accounting method. Form fill up and get forward. And that's the linchpin, if you will, to engage the study with the catch up depreciation into your current year return. It's lucrative for that have been in service for five, seven, even nine or ten years, having to maximize their depreciation by catching up on that depreciation. The, the other, the other really during cost segregation is it can be carried forward for up to 20 years. So we've got clients who have we do a couple studies for that. Um, if they own more than one building, they have the ability to zero for the year and have carry forward. So uh, something that you know can really add up, up especially that catch up depreciation factor um, for um, any building that's been in service. Uh, in the years, the real parameters for cost segregation and our building needs to be uh, in service in the last 12 years. We have uh, a basis of about 300,000 or more. Um, really, if this is lower than 300,000, uh, the return on investment is really not there. Well, the cost savings aren't going to be that very, very strong. Um, and a study is a study, so it's something that. And we have a certain fee range we have that make uh, a lot of sense to so save fifteen thousand dollars and pay six thousand for a study, for example. A hundred thousand we find is a very good opportunity for client uh, some tax dollars and increase cash flow. With the uh, change of accounting method, we don't have um, limitations issues. Is that that I understand? And um, I actually had a meeting um, a couple months ago. I thought it was kind of funny. This uh, this CPA, who's who's actually a very good CPA and, and very experienced, I uh, had not heard that, that you fixed depreciation issues with a change in accounting method and thought there was a statute of limitations. And so the, this the application, not just with cost segregation studies, but for instance, if somebody has a, a rental property and wasn't taking depreciation, and you can use the 3115 to uh, with a change in accounting method. And she was so shocked by that and uh, said, well, what's the change in accounting method from, from wrong to right? And that's basically what it is, uh, changing the accounting method from wrong to right so you don't have limitations issues. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And that's one of the misconceptions we see I see all the time uh, when we call them CPAs and even in owners and what have you. Um, the, the the amending of returns, you know, that's always a people are concerned about doing that. Uh, um, offices or what have you um, is something that that's you can just uh, um, group bunch up uh, the, the, the depreciation in the current year of uh, your return. So, really good opportunity for any building that's been in service in the last 12 years um, to capitalize on the catch up depreciation. Okay. One job, please. Okay. Cost segregation. And like we have on, on the sheet here, it's five hundred thousand, but. Uh, What's your audio. Yeah. Okay. We have thousand or more, um, but we will go slow with about three hundred thousand or more as far as doing that pre. -alarm. Uh, we find that um, it can be valuable for clients uh, up until about 300,000, I should say as low as 300,000. Uh, 12, 12 to 14 years is really the cutoff uh, as far as what you're going to see with respect to getting depreciation, uh, depreciation advantages. Uh, when you depreciate it more than about 12 years, typically you're gonna be, uh, there's not as much there because there hasn't so much depreciation taken out. For the factor in cost segregation, besides buying a building, uh, um, 
the any type of improvements that are made made to buildings. So, for instance, a building we do a lot of work with dentists and physicians are really good candidates for cost segregation. Uh, and for example, well, they, a lot of times they'll buy a building and then they'll retrofit it or make improvements to it to fit their practice. You know, the process mechanical, electrical, for machines or you know things of that nature. Uh, put hundred thousand dollars into the building. Now, the building itself might not be a great candidate for cost segregation, but the fact that they spent, you know, a, a large amount of money on the improvements, that in and of itself. So, one that uh, to keep your eyes open for is any type of improvements on a property uh, that were done in uh, last 12 years as well. This year, any commercial building uh, a candidate for cost segregation stuff. Uh, we've um, buildings, uh, whether it's a medical office, we do a lot of auto dealerships, being that we're based out of Michigan, uh, and you know, real restaurants, uh, health care facilities are excellent candidates for cost segregation because a lot of process, electrical and mechanical, that goes to types of buildings, uh, more um, you know, clearly oriented. These are good candidates for cost segregation studies. Uh, a lot of these you'll find in commercial real estate is that especially banks and CSs and, and uh, um, fast food restaurants aren't owned by the company itself, so owned by individual owners. Uh, those are really good candidates for cost segregation studies uh, for clients to maximize their depreciation. Um, this is facilities, uh, apartment buildings. Typically, apartment buildings or apartment complexes families are the most lucrative candidates for cost segregation, um, being as we find that they have the most components involved. Um, to see between four and six hundred components. Now, with respect to um, multi-family properties, you tend to see closer to six to eight hundred components on a property. Uh, today, there's more more in those. You're going to see more than a lot. You're going to see more land improvements uh, and those, those types of items. But in a nutshell, I guess any type of, of class that a commercial property, almost as you can think of, is going to be in there for cost segregation. Uh, work. This is a great example of how cost segregation works. And on the left, the first uh, is going to be uh, property just straight line depreciation over 39 years. And second example on the right is going to be the breakdown or breakout, if you will, after the segregation study is done. So that's we're adding uh, going from about 50000 a year uh, line method. To uh, close to $195,000 in depreciation expense, uh, and that's in the first year. year. Now, rule of thumb, we estimates are preliminary estimates. We give a one year number and also a five year number. Means you're going to, how much you're going to maximize in the first year, and then we maximize or add through five years. And, you can, and as you can see here, those first years are significant, significant. Amount of appreciation that's being picked up uh, year two and three, you're tripling your, uh, or say doubling and tripling your expense uh, for the client. So, a really good opportunity for clients to, uh, you know, again, save uh, save income taxes and also cash flow. So, this is an example that you want to refer to um, so an average building, $2 million. Um, and the different components we're going to break out of that building. All buildings are pretty, pretty solid for studies. So I've got um, different types of, um, uh, you know, cafeterias or there's a larger parking lot, land improvements, those types of things, which may um, office build uh, candidates for cost segregation studies. Financial benefits uh, of cost segregation studies. 
want to kind of not talk about the ROI though, as far as uh, savings go. So, um, we typically find clients. Um, we can usually, and this is based on a 40%. We'll call it 40% tax rate. Um, state combined there. there. We can save our clients between 10 and 20 times the cost in the first year. So, $2 million building, uh, I save the client, you know, on a 40% tax rate, probably close to uh, more than $100,000 in the first year on the tax return. Uh, additionally, uh, you know, a, study, a $2 million building typically for us, study wise, uh, is between five and $7,000. So, uh, you can see, you know, the significant savings um, with to the ROI there uh, in the study. Now, something that example there would be a first year or um, a current year study, where you know if you get the catch up depreciation, you're multiples of that um, 30, 40 times the fee typically because you're getting that catch up depreciation. In the second line, the actual tax savings, 100,000 for every million. You know that goes along with what I was saying earlier about 100,000 to 2,000 in additional deductions. So, kind of two, not two ways to look at it, but typically like to do our estimates or analysis with respect to deductions. The clients have different tax rates, uh, the corporation or whether it's individual or what have you. So, when we come to analysis, we usually show the, the deductions that are being created. Uh, then, then the CPA or client for that matter. And just can think about their tax rate and see exactly how it impacts them. <coughs> Excuse me. As you about 15 to 50 percent of building costs can be reclassified. And the number's pretty. It's a pretty wide range, but it's depending on the type of building, warehouses can be reclassified probably a little less than multifamily, and warehouses. And will be the lowest end probably because typically there's not as many, many cooks, especially if it's more of a box warehouse. Uh, that uh, they would allow us let them to reclassify. Next, please. Uh, I should uh, address this slide. Um, I, um, of course, titled the slide of why Huddleston tax CPAs, and, and um, it's not based on my experience. It's based on Todd's experience. Uh, obviously, as he's shown here, he's very experienced in providing cost segregation studies. Um, and and um, I sort of went out shopping to find the best that I could, and the best that I could find was, was Todd uh, in, in this area of cost segre segregation studies. And, um, so maybe Todd, you can talk a little bit about the the red slide and the approach that's taken in, in, in fee structures and whatnot. Um, fixed fee firm, the IRS frowns upon uh, any type of contingencies, um, just because of the fact that it tends to make you more aggressive and it's not beneficial for the taxpayer at the end of the day. So we fix fee structure, which is time and expenses only. Which is going to be exactly um, just like it sounds. A lot of CPAs uh, bill work. Um, we do our free analysis um, to start the study back with the fixed fee. Typically, um, our studies range from we've done some for as low as 3,500. We've done very very large studies, uh, 40,000 plus um, for, for for 100 buildings, large large buildings, but. Your typical for the clients we're probably looking at here are going to be roughly between uh, five and twelve thousand. And again, just based on the complexity of the building, um, you know, price is kind of a factor as well. Only because you know your ten dollar building is probably going to have more complexity than your two million dollar building, so you'll probably be a little higher um, for that larger building. You're going to see more it's more advantageous uh, tax savings on a ten dollar building typically in a two million. Building. We do use the engineer-based approach. Our firm, is made up, our firm is made up of engineers and architects um, and professionals, lead certified professionals. 
a heavy experience in construction and design. So we're very comfortable. Uh, we perform a study. It's very, very thorough, roughly 50 to 60 pages. Uh, pictures, charts, graphs, uh, so the full um, break of all the components in the building uh, by line. So in the study, you receive uh, actually a spreadsheet, if you will, it's probably 10 or 12 pages long, which will break different types of shrubs, different types of trees, different types of um, roofing, mechanical, parking lot, all types of objects can be segregated out or brought by historical value price uh, a uh, price via system called RS means which is the most preferred cost software uh, everything we do is strictly by the book we're a very conservative firm uh, at we do free audit support with all studies so if there's an issue with um, respect to service um, testing any type of um, Taken, we flag our work um, back to 100% free audit support. Um, our study is extremely comprehensive. When, um, basically, the first thing we do is send the CPA the necessary information with respect to um, the new deductions, the new the new structure of the depreciation schedule, how it should be laid out. And we also form 3115s as well um, for our clients. So, so that for you to know would be that you know very seamless with respect to what CPAs have to do. There's not a lot of work involved at all. Um, really, no work. The only thing I would need to perform a free analysis is just a depreciation schedule. Uh, the rest of the property. For what we do is we measure the property via satellite. Uh, the models we develop to come up with concerns estimate of the savings um, with respect to additional deductions. So we completely outperform by 5 to 10 percent actual projection. So we're not going to say we can save you $400,000 and cut $300,000. That's just not how it works. We're concerned my partner's model is extremely, extremely uh, accurate and he's done so many studies in his career that he's very comfortable if he's a thousand it's likely to be 210 or 2 215. Um, again, keep up with the um, all the voting regulations. Uh, some of you might have heard of the Ameristyle case, which was a uh, case in the uh, um, western part of the country, which uh, challenged some cost irrigation issues. We tend to agree with a few things on there, but at the same time, uh, our, our these are strictly based on what is allowed and what is not allowed. Uh, we're very, very comfortable if we do it. And again, going back to the, using the engineered approach, where we're going to blueprints, we're going to do a full site visit when the property is located. And then only, uh, we will um, look at blueprints, pull city, um, city forms and documents from the city. Uh, there's prints there or any type of um, public record information. It's extremely thorough with respect to the property, and you know exactly what you're getting when you. Uh, when you were studying. Pretty far. Okay. Okay. Process goes. Um, the first thing to do with all studies is do a free analysis. So there, what we're going to do is we're going to measure again, like I said, measure the property, turn it through our model. So they feel for exactly what the savings will be. And then that really the feasibility report is going to tell you exactly whether you should do this study or not. Um, if, if the term is only saving you a minimal amount of dollars and the study is going to be fifty five hundred, you know, I'll push our we don't push our studies uh, with respect to that. We make sure that the study makes sense and investment is there for the clients. Um, that, that's what we most of our clients we've done multiple studies for, so we like clients for life. We decide to go forward with the study and sign an engagement letter. We will do a site visit on the product where it's located. We're located out of Michigan and I'll have an office in Charlotte now. We just started. Um, but studies all over the country. I've got engineers in California right now, in fact. Uh, with some studies, it's a large hospital. 
schools. So we have studies all over the country, uh, and we perform site visits on each individual study, no matter where it's located. Um, we receive um, the engagement letter. We'll set a site visit and look to start our diligence in working with the city, the local municipalities, to get the information we can get um, with the construction data, uh, a blueprint, those types of things. And all clients got uh, blueprints. Some do, some don't. I'll really go for the perks as well um, to perform the study. And the, and the initial depreciation schedule is going to be uh, the basis amount which we're going to tie to on the study uh, as that goes. And, on, and the reason that's there, if the new construction type of building, we'd use an AA, which is the contractor's um, pay application, will tell us exactly what the, the uh, or what the number tie into are and how much we're um, and how much what the numbers we're working with if you. Well, the site visits take half a day, um, depending on how complex the building is, how large it is. But if you do walk off the property, we're measuring, making a, a number of measurements, uh, and pictures, doing those types of diligence, uh, which will allow us to perform a thorough and accurate study. For uh, our firm is um, three to five weeks to perform a study from start to finish. Uh, we move quick, more quickly uh, depending on how clients, uh, what their needs are. I imagine usually during the deadline season, uh, 13, 4, 15, 9, 15, and 10, 15, we tend to get studies done a little more quickly because time is of the essence. Uh, typically three to four weeks, three to five weeks on a typical study. Um, if there's a we can probably complete it quickly for clients uh, as they need it to be. Um, if they are busy of the new times, I should say, those deadlines are usually pretty busy for us, and then the end of the year is usually busy for us. Uh, clients are our uh, CPA are starting to plan um, going forward or kind of getting a feel for who buildings in the last year, who might have um, renovations, those types of items. So, so we, we do work we do closely with clients and CPAs to make sure everything is timely filed and everything is is timely uh, timely completed. But after the site visit, our engineers on this on, a, on any individual project will be studying blueprints and assembling takeoffs, which is a construction term for bring down the building, if you will. So taking off the electrical, the mechanical, the parking lot any type of improvements, and those are the line items that get uh, strictly detailed in the study and show really how much the savings are going to be. Um, an, an individual item is priced out, out exactly to um, the store cost in using RS means, which is the, the um, upper mint or IRS saw to be used. As far as the final product goes, again, get with the CPA. We like to have CPAs on board all the time with this and be in contact with CPAs. Not sure that it makes sense for the clients to do, but initially so that we can get report findings and then finish the study so that this will have all the new information, his or her depreciation schedules, and also incorporate the 13, if need be, into the term. So we send a new updated depreciation schedules for the client, uh, and then also uh, we, we send the full report to the client or the CPA, whoever prefers to have, have it, on PDF format, and we'll also send a hard copy to the client as well, um, just if there's ever any issues or essentially know what they're getting. Um, it's about a 60-page study. It's the most I've ever seen, um, so I've seen quite a few. So I think it's something that really has a lot of value and, and um, is very substantial in nature. Nature. Please. Uh, is next slide Todd? I don't know. Well, it might not be. I think this. Okay. 
to reiterate, um, client, again, that's been, had a service purchased or innovated in the last 12 years with a base of about 300000 or more. Have, um, with, with, in coordination with John to do a free analysis um, to understand exactly what the savings are going to be, the kind of ability report or feasibility study. They're on usually less than a day. So it, it's not there's no waiting involved or anything of that nature. So it gives you a great way to talk to clients, um, and a significant value to them. It's a great way to market um, to clients and say have a source for segregation. Um, has your is your current CPA using it? Is your CPA is not using it? So it's something that can add value to uh, help you prospect for new clients as well. People are uh, figuring out if there's any questions or typing them in their chat box. Um, let me point out that um, we will, um, in a couple of days, send you a PDF of uh, the slides. Um, That'll be in the next couple of days. I, I also wanted to point out one, one thing that we do for uh, all of our webcasts is um, if you've attended this webcast, we, we'd be happy to review any open tax return that you have. So that would be 2009, 2010, or 2011. We'll review those tax returns for free to uh, decide, uh, figure out if there's any money left on the table or if. Um, you're to uh, some undue audit risk. So uh, far, the most that we found in uh, reviewing these tax returns was a little over $44,000 for uh, one client. Uh, but we had several others come close to that. So we hope to beat that record. So uh, maybe we have a tax return we can look at and uh, we can find some money, um, maybe more than we found before. Um, I also wanted to point out, now I, I set up a forward for its email to go to both uh, Todd and I, but I figured out this morning that um, we're headed up with GoDaddy. Um, we didn't actually have that domain with GoDaddy, so um, actually what I set up this morning would be cost segregation at huddlestontaxcpas.com. Uh, I might in the next couple of days set up this email as well as a forward to both Todd and I. Uh, but at any rate, uh, the, the PDF that I send you in the next couple of days will have the, the correct email. But if you're if you're looking at this for now, uh, you'd email us at, at uh, cost segregation at untaxcpas.com. So um, that's oh, and I just wanted to mention, um, you know, tell your friends about uh, the upcoming uh, webcast that we have, or any of the other recorded webcasts that. Uh, um, you think might be useful to them. Uh, Todd, uh, um, anything else? No, thank everybody for being involved in this, and uh, feel free to give John a call weekend, uh, you know, at least do a free analysis in front of your clients and see if it makes sense. Okay, well, it doesn't look like there's any questions. Um, if uh, there are questions, you can just uh, email us, um, but I guess all in the meeting, and uh, thanks everyone for attending, and thanks a lot, Todd. You bet, John. All right, bye now.